GMB pros, welcome everyone. Welcome all those that are here live, those that are catching the replay. We're going to save this one, not going live on Facebook because we're going to show some back end stuff. Um, so on today, so first of all, welcome, appreciate you guys' support. As you know, uh, William and I's goal for GMB pros is twofold. One, to help you grow your agency, go wide, and two, help you um, get better results for your clients, go deep. All about marketing, rank and rent. Really, it's about five pillars that we do, um, you know, on page, off page, content, some backlinking and some traffic, all SEO. I don't care who you are, who it is. They're going to deal with one of those pillars. It, it all falls in this subcategories, but it kind of falls into that. So we like to dig deep. Um, what I'll do is like, depending on the experiences of questions I had during the week, um, I'll bring it up, you know, like, okay, or somebody ask a question, I'll bring it up. And the topic for this kind of week we brought in Jeremy, as you guys know, he's my web guy. Any troubles, any issues? I need troubleshooting quick. He's my web guy. He's part of the team. Um, you know, feel free, Jeremy, if you want to put on the chat, like your contact, Jeremy Webb, look me up on Facebook. You'll see him as my friend on there. Um, but, uh, you know, feel free. There's really no but. So this week, what um, I wanted to speak on is about websites. As we're building our like rank and rent and different properties and help ranking them with the different tools, um, like what to look for, what's going to slow you down, um, what does kind of certain things mean, um, and kind of some pros and cons on WordPress plugins. So here's my my opinion. I'll give you my my thoughts on it. WordPress plugin to me, what I found is the more you have is not better. If you actually register a domain and do a speed test with it, just straight up blank, you know, register it. It's, you know, put up a one pager and you throw it on like a speed test on mobile and on a desktop. It's going to be fast, responsive, right? There's nothing in it. But as you go build it and you put a lot of these like plugins and whatnot, I think it slows it down, right? It makes certain tasks easier. For example, as I'm, uh, you know, implementing this stuff myself, you know, some of you know, um, I only used to do GMB. Now, um, website and GMB, I've taken Lee's training. I've had him as a guest here on GMB Pros and his theory and, and, and uh, methods of ranking and teaching me SEO, I really, you know, implementing that. And for example, you guys will hear me talk about best practices. And some of that is like Google Search Council, right? And even with Lee, the first thing he talks about is like technical fixes, right? Um, you even hear like Caleb, he's been a guest here, like, there's like certain things as an SEO agency or as a uh, marketing agency that you have to do. It's just like best practices for data, for, you know, the, just the foundational stuff that a lot of us don't maybe hear about it because you would think that's already down pat. And I'm finding that not to be the case. As we go through different websites and different audits, the basic stuff is not done all the way up to like Google Search Council, sitemaps. So like with tools, you can you do it with plugins, but I like to do it with the TXT file, plugging it right in there, verifies right away. There's nothing like bogging it down. And we're gonna show you, let's do a couple, um, Jeremy. We'll show you diff two, like we'll show you two different examples and I can shoot over the logins if you don't have any, but uh, okay. you know, it's pretty yeah, basic. And Jeremy's going to go through one right now, the back end of WordPress, what they mean, how maybe how to install, because installation and activation is like <laughs> one thing and then it throws it on. So, and what does a lot look like? And if you have another thing, Jeremy, like if you have somebody else built it, you want to make sure you're aligned with that white label. That's why I always talk about with William Jones marketing white label. I think it's a great solution but you have to manage your expectations. You have to be on the same page as far as onboarding, what platform you're building on. What does it look like on the other end? And it has to match your side. That's why like, um, 
Ruan really taught me this a long time ago. He only deals with one platform at the time that he came out with his YouTube, WordPress. If you're not on WordPress, we're not doing crap for you. And that's a hard pill to swallow sometimes because you're needing the customers, right? Like, oh, I need every dollar. But God, it'll make your life so much easier with your white label, with your performance. And we're going to show you how, like, WordPress plugins can kill you, kills your speed. Speed is a ranking factor, right? And you want to diversify your ranking factors on a lot of things. And speed is one of those bubbles, right? Technical uh, stuff, you know, it goes in deeper. But like, guys, don't be lazy. Don't be lazy by getting tons of plugins. I try to minimize your plugin. That has been my experience as we're going to show you some here in a minute. Um, as far as like, you can do a lot of this stuff manually and be effective because as WordPress as a whole, it's just a platform. It already has like stuff built in that maybe not as smooth, different um, themes will do, will, will behave a certain way, right? As you build stuff, it'll throw multiple H1s. It'll do like, wacky stuff, right? With pictures maybe or whatever. So you got to go in there manually. So WordPress is the most pop. If you look up um, content um, management systems, WordPress is dominant, right? I think it, it makes the SEO hill less of a steep hill to climb. Um, so it's one of the dominant ones, but it's still like, comes with, it's not like, Again, it's like how I said with tools, it's a tool that you that you leverage, but it's to help you with the heavy lifting. You still want to get eyeballs. You still want to um, optimize it in, or yourself. So I know I talked a bunch because th this I'm in the middle of this right now. It's like, it's I got to get these to the people to help them. Um, if they're running through this, like if they're running through issue or business owners, plumbers out there, um, you know, like how can I optimize my website? It's not just to build, just to build one. You have to have that balance for Google and your client and conversions and answering the questions so Google can um, engage and make your site aware to the customers, right? So be on purpose with your your um with your website. Now, for those, I gave a brief introduction to Jeremy. Jeremy is one of the coolest dudes, very generous dudes. He's helped me, bailed me out many, many, many times from me messing up from clients' questions to um, different projects that we work on um, together. He's very familiar with William Jones's process and how to you know, work any kinks, anything that maybe not fit to your process um, or to your clients that you can polish up. So, uh, Jeremy, why don't you uh, introduce yourself a little bit? Tell us where you've yeah. been, where you're at now. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, let's see. I don't know. I feel like I'm repeating it for anybody that's met me before, but uh, I've been doing this about three years now. Um, I work in everything from WordPress, Webflow, all of it. I completely agree with you. Everything is easier in WordPress. Uh, mm -hmm. Part of it is just there's a lot more resources out there. Um, it's kind of like if I was going to go buy a phone and my most important thing is being able to buy accessories, I'm going to buy an iPhone kind of thing. So think of it that way is iPhone has that adoption. WordPress has that adoption. So you have a lot more people out there that can help you with it, as well as there's a lot more solutions and tailored solutions in WordPress, um, that sort of thing. Uh, so I, I, I've been working on this stuff for about three years. I do a little bit of SEO, GMB stuff. Um, I, I kind of surround myself around my, my website builds and then just kind of being a fixer, helping people like yourself out, um, sorting out different website issues and kind of customizing things down for what's actually necessary there. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and then, I mean, you just kind of trail from what you were saying as far as, uh, you know, the importance of WordPress and the plugins and how it's like, it's very easy, especially when someone builds a site themselves, they get, get it all kind of set up and they start seeing all these plugins. I mean, there's millions of them, right, in the store. Uh, but keep in mind, just because it's in the WordPress store doesn't mean it's a perfect plugin, just like you wouldn't download every app on your phone kind of thing. You'd kind of read the reviews, look at who else has been using it, that sort of thing. Um, and just like apps on your phone, because that's essentially what plugins are, is they're little extra apps to WordPress, right? Uh, just like the apps on your phone, once you start adding hundreds of apps, even if each app is useful to you in those little parts, 
your phone starts slowing down. And before you know it, you're clearing off, you're resetting the whole thing, you're starting over, right? And it, it's slowing it down. So think of WordPress just like you would a computer or a phone. You start overloading the thing, it's going to slow it down. And it's not just going to slow it down for you, it's going to slow it down for your visitors. And people aren't patient. So I think the last stat I saw is like the average user is like seven seconds. Um, they look at a homepage if it's not loaded or they can't click on something in seven seconds, they're over it kind of thing. And the potential of them to come back, which of course hurts your click-through rates. Those guys out there, they're in the SEO, understand all the click-through rates and stuff. That's really what it is, is at the end of the day, if someone can't interact with your site, they don't want to be there. If I've got to wait a few minutes in 2024 for a website to load, I'm going to go to the next plumber, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so that's really what it comes down to is just because you have an app and it's super cool, doesn't mean you need it kind of thing. And there might even be one out there that does it better. So just because you have two calendar apps, one might be really efficient and one might not be right. Um, same thing happens with plugins, the way that they're coded um, and the way they interact with the website itself makes a huge difference. Um, so a lot of times you'll even notice when you're on the store and you're, you're shopping for plugins, keep an eye out. A lot of times they'll mention in there that this has no impact on your page speed. And it's because it's all just back end stuff that's not really affecting the front end of the site. Um, so those things aren't aren't as big of a deal. But when you start getting into the front end stuff, you're loading tons of extra JavaScript and all kinds of stuff to make these plugins work. And some of these pages don't even have anything to do with the plugin itself kind of thing. So that, that's where the mess kind of starts to form in there. Um, so, but yeah, man. Um, did you want to jump in and go through plugins first on this one or... Uh, yeah, so let's do an overall well, overview of it. Yeah, well, what I wanted to do is kind of show you what uh, the different plugins, what might be too much, what might too little. If you have somebody built it, what are some of these tools that they're using? Um, what to be careful, because I messed it up myself, right? Not knowing uh, what's going on. But before we move on, hey, uh, Christopher, did you have any questions um, to this point? I want to make sure um address any questions you may have uh specifically before we dive in um if not we'll just go ahead and dive in i wanted to show it um and jeremy as you guys know we, we like to have them at least once a month to do the website stuff and the issues you may have but christopher if you do don't hesitate to type it in or chime in uh not a problem um curious as to what is uh so uh Let's go ahead and show some examples, uh, Christopher, and I'll show you what like the plugins um, is and what we could, um, let me see. And what to kind of give like, there's one thing, uh, so that's a great point, Chris. Um, so we're talking about plugins on a website there's one thing to talk about it and then the uh, there's another thing to show it and how that impacts like ranking usability um so that's what we're kind of diving into as far as the seo how to help uh agency with their clients or get better results through the website and as far as the website's concerned how you can bog it down with too many or plugins that you can do manually that you don't need a plugin that'll make it a lot smoother um so uh no it's not a new plugin we're introducing it's just the plugins that a website has how we can um just you know don't bog it down the effects of it so let's jump right into it jeremy yeah absolutely man um so let me see if i can share my screen here <laughs> Strings open. Here we go. Should be that way. Did I just share the wrong one? That no, Bitman. Oh, hang on a second. I just I've gave got... you access to another one because I want to show them two different ones so they can kind of like. Oh, okay. It just, it just popped up. I was worried I was showing off your passwords. Oh, no, the screen. No, you did uh, not. <laughs> it's all good. Cool. Okay, so you can see the back end of the website here. Yep. Just want to make sure. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, uh, so this one is the back end of that bit. Mutant Crafters. Now, uh, now all we see is a chat GPT on your screen. 
Jeremy. That's all you're seeing on my screen? Yeah, blue screen. With, there you go. Now I see it. Oh, okay. I can, that's what it is. Fair enough. We'll work over here. Uh, all right. So this is the back end of, of one of your new websites. This is one that we've actually cleared some plugins off of. Um, it still looks like there's actually some stuff to kind of go through and look at. Um, so we'll jump over here to our plugins. Let's see what we got going on here. And I'm just going to scroll past all this stuff at the top. A lot of it's advertisements and that kind of thing anyways on those. Um, so right at the top here, I'll just explain what each plugin is. Um, and then we can kind of go through on whether or not it's important to this site or not kind of thing. Um, and these are really common ones, actually. So all-in-one migration. Um, this was more than likely something that was used to transfer the site from the builder to you. Um, it's also really common to be used as a backup plugin. Um, this one doesn't actually affect the front end of the site, um, so it can definitely stay there. Um, but keep in mind, you don't necessarily need multiple backup plugins running. So if you have another one that you're using, that kind of thing. Uh, oh, looks like we lost Jeremy. Well, he pushed the wrong button here. Let me get him back here in a second. Give me one second. You have 50 of them, Christopher? <laughs> that's a lot. So that's what I mean. Let me go ahead and share my screen. So that's what I mean as far as the different plugins, right? Um, I think this is almost a lot. You want to have, to me, very, very minimal um, because I want it to affect, I want, I don't want it to affect the speed. And I notice one of the first things is like all these plugins that, that it's, you know, working on. I think there's some like crucial ones, for example, like the total cash. If you want to clear the cash, once you make adjustments, um, I tend to like that one. Uh, it's easier for me to clear cash or purge is how they call it on here. Um, so that one's a good one. A lot of, uh, you know, depending on the spam, if there's people attacking you, this is just an example one. So for those that are catching the replay, hopefully they won't mess it up because I will I would love to use this as an example of what the different tools or what different SEO strategies that we're working on. But these are the different plugins um, that we have active. You, part of the security too is you want to keep a lot of these um, updated, right? Uh, some of these I have, well, I haven't, again, this is one of the brand new sites that we just got up not too long ago. So I like to do the auto um, updates, but like Jeremy said, this one does, we actually took some off of here over, you know, uh, like Christopher pointed out, there's 10 of them. You can see how many overall we have. Um, and what they're used for, like there's Divi. All these, I did have it built on a Divi platform. As you can see, uh, the different platforms uh, that we have set up here. Okay, let's do... Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it was updating, that's fine. So um, now what I wanna do is, he already took some off of this one. Let me bring up another one and we'll kind of do, a, we can kind of compare it. And once Jeremy's back, cause he's more of the guru, like what is necessary, what is not necessary. And then we'll go into the example of what happened to us as far as if you mess with one little thing, it can ruin the whole site. So we'll go into that in a little bit here. There's Jeremy there, then back in. And give me one second. Let me give him some privileges. Boom, boom, boom. And you should be able to start your screen and all that jazz, Jeremy. But let me open this other one as well. That way we can kind of compare. Like Jeremy said, I believe he had... Um, already removed some of the plugins on this particular one. So let me um, log into this other one. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll just share my entire screen and we can jump back and forth. Let me know if you can't um, start 
your video, Jeremy. You are muted. Or if you're still booting up, uh, we still lost. Okay, let me do that. Can you hear me okay now? There we go. Now we can, yep. Okay. And I, I'm not sure if you guys can see me. Sorry about that. Everything crashed, and I, I had to start taking stuff out to get it hey. to come back up. No worries. Now the it's video not... is off, though. But Okay. Let's oh. see here. There we go. So can let me, me... – yep. Perfect. Awesome. So let me um bring this last one up. You know what? Let me do the entire screen. Okay. And we'll go ahead and minimize this. So this is another one, guys, on this particular one. Login. Did we uninstall some on these? No. Okay. So on this one, there's 28 different plugins. Mm -hmm. Right, you guys can see it here. This one, Jeremy hasn't really uh, played with it, but versus the first website, it only has uh, 10. And like Christopher was saying, he has 50 in his. So I would definitely um, kind of do as the minimal, right? The low lowest dosage of effectiveness. That way it doesn't affect your speed and it helps you with um, a lot like if you mess with one thing and and if we can go into that a little bit, Jeremy, how yeah. I thought it was something and then I disconnected. So I just wanted to show you the difference on yeah. once well, let's, you let's go, go through this there. one, Alfredo. Um, okay. Let's go through this one because this is actually one that we we deactivated the excessive plugins and then we didn't delete them. Um, this is one of the ones we had talked about actually going back ah, through okay. today. So, there you go. So maybe if you can explain that a little bit uh, more. Yeah. Do you have access to it? That way you can take control. Uh, let me see if I can. That was the second the one time. that I yeah. sent you over. Silicon Masters. Yeah, that one I've got. Cool. Yep. Let's trade screens. I'll take over. Yeah. And that should be that one. Share. All right. You guys can see it okay? Yep. Awesome. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do on this is I'm going to show you guys um, the theme because that's very relevant with this site. Um, so we'll go over here to our themes themselves. Um, and this plays along with plugins. If you have a bunch of extra themes, um, it doesn't affect site speed, but it is potential ways that uh, people can get in malware-wise onto your site. Um, so you do want to worry about having a bunch of extra themes that you've installed that you're not using, that sort of thing. Um, but the first thing I want to point out is this is a Divi site, um, one of the more popular page builders. Um, Elementor is another real popular one, um, of course, and then like building on the 2024 theme itself. Um, so that's important to this site, right? Is this is built on Divi, not Elementor. Um, so now going back to your plugins on this guy, um, we'll notice right here, most of these ones that I have deactivated for you are actually Elementor specific plugins kind of thing. Um, so more than likely, uh, I'm not sure if this was a William Jones build or not, um, but this is uh, this is a developer's toolkit, basically. So they have all their plugins and they, they go in and they build and it just hasn't had a cleanup depending on the service that you asked for, of course, um, you know, there's there's money to be saved by doing the cleanup yourself, right? Um, and so that that's what we're looking at here is we've got a lot of Elementor stuff that's in here, even though we're a Divi built site. Um, so that stuff running is going to slow down the rest of your site if you're not using it. Now, I'm not saying Elementor slows down your site, but running two at the same time is not doing you any benefits necessarily. Um, there are a few use cases out there. I don't want to say that it is a default. If you're on Divi, delete Elementor or vice versa, um, because there are some integrations um, where some sites are built with for a reason where half the uh, website is Divi and the other half is Elementor. Um, but in general, when you're working with these, these properties, these small business sites, um, there's really no reason to be running both of them on the same site. Um, so that, that's my first red flag with this, right? Um, so if, if you, if you're running Divi and you just bought a website, you got a ton of Elementor stuff on there. Um, my suggestion would be is to deactivate everything, 
that, that you're not sure about and then go through your site, just page by page, see if anything's not loading, see if anything's not working. Um, I know I always am a broken record about caching, but of course, clear your browser cache, make sure you're actually looking at that restored site without the plugins running, that sort of thing. Um, but that way you can actually look and see, is this even running on my site anywhere? That kind of thing. Okay. Um, so that, that was the biggest one with this. Um, the other things that are in here is like Cadence AI starter templates. Now, if that's something that you're using as part of your builds, of, of course, but if you just bought this site, which is the case with this, um, then of course, you know, it's not necessary that we still have the starter templates in there. So again, that was part of their toolkit. Um, now this one, if I remember correctly, had multiple caches um, installed on it. Let's see if I can move my little toolbar here. Um, so uh, this was, a, I'm not sure if this was something that you had done or, or if it was just part of the transfer process, but there was, uh, I think, two different caching plugins in here. Um, and one had been deactivated, but the cache itself was actually still there. And that was showing you some really weird issues on the front end. Um, where it was showing the right homepage and then not the right homepage, that sort of thing. Um, so that's another thing to look for is how many caching plugins are on your site. Um, even if you're just going through and you, you maybe you just took over a site for a new client and maybe they didn't realize and they're running three different caching plugins thinking that it's going to help them, but really it's going to break the site more places than not. And it's really not going to improve your speed. Um, so here, here's like, a perfect example, Jeremy. Um so obviously it, it depends on two. I want a disclaimer out there, like Christopher was pointing out, um, what type of website you have, right? So like if you have an e-commerce site, right? Like Christopher's saying he has a lot of them on his okay. e-com site, which is uh, what I do a lot. Of, he does a lot of e-commerce. Um, okay. But with his plugins on e-commerce, it, it's between like security, spam, theme plugins, forms, uh, slide pl plugins, all that help him to make it quick, right? Especially on an e-com side, you have a lot going on. Absolutely. Um, now, it's not uncommon to have a lot of plugins. It's just, do the plugins matter? Are they being used? And it kind of, is it worth your your page speed for it. Um, now, you, the way I look at it is what's the return on investment on a slider? So a slider is probably gonna sell you more products. So if I lose one page visitor because it slowed my site down half a second kind of thing, but I sell 10 more products because they were in a slider, that's a win, right? So that that's kind of the trade-off there. Now, if I'm using, I really like this slider over here and this slider over here. And so I've got four different slider plugins going. Um, my site speed is down a couple seconds on page load. Um, and then at the end of the day is, are the different sliders benefiting me somehow? Or can I delete five of them and get down to one slider and maybe just use that in a few different places kind of thing? Yeah. And, uh, and then, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm, well, I was, I was going to use this example right here. Now, a lot of times, like when I started the the um, uh, the meeting here, or the, 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 the show, we talked about, for example, Google Search Console. There's a lot of different ways. Another best practice must do is SSL certificate. So correct me if I'm wrong, Jeremy, but if my web host gives me that for free and sets mm -hmm. it up for me for free, why do I need a, in like what's right in front of us, a really simple SSL plugin? Um, in general. General, you probably don't. If you're if your hosting yeah. is providing it, um, like for instance, my hosting, it's part of my Plus dashboard. Uh, right. Where where I um, I don't want to quote the company wrong. I think it's like super fast SSL or something. They give out free SSLs, um, and that's what's plugged into my dashboard. I don't run any plugins specifically for SSL. Um, so there's really not necessarily a point probably to this plugin being here if you didn't put it there and it wasn't part of your setup that you intended. Um, it sounds like that is a carryover on it. And um, that's, what, that's what I mean as far as like, bam, this is one thing from security issues. If there's like a back door where people get in with this plugin and hack your stuff. Um, but this is what I mean. Like, take a look at them. A lot of this stuff you can do without the plugins. 
which I think in the big picture, right? Is this one plugin, if I take it off, is it gonna like improve me like by mm -hmm. tons and tons? Probably not, but an accumulation of all these little things will make a difference. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, just in perspective, I launched uh, a site recently. It was a, a 10 page SEO, it had a decent amount of animated elements and it was built in um, Bloxy, which uses a lot of the 2024 theme, basically. Um, it's like an add on to that. But by the time I was done, I had four plugins kind of thing. You know, I, my contact form, my uh, migration plugin to move the thing. Um, and then I think we had uh, security and anti-spam. That was that was all I shipped that site with, uh, because it just didn't need anything else. Um, so if if you can design a site, so say you're you're back at you know the drawing board and you're designing a site, uh, you don't need all these extra elements and plugins. And a lot of this stuff turns into like design elements that look cool, um, but they're doing it in a very clunky way, or they're adding a lot of other stuff that you're not using that is still slowing down your site just to get that one piece that you're actually using. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the trade-off there. So, uh, but it is possible to basically ship a site with zero plugins, kind of thing that is full functional. You'd be kind of amazed at what the front end of some of these sites look like, um, and they're just adding a little bit of CSS, a little bit of, of JavaScript in there, kind of thing, um, and not adding the tons of plugins and whatnot for different things. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I mean, jumping back with this guy. Um, so a lot of these other ones that we have in here. Um, so like white label CMS, that's probably not taking a big chunk out, but again, depends on if it's something you're using. Um, widgets for Google reviews. Uh, I believe when we checked this site, it was installed. It's a great plugin. I use this actually on a lot of sites by Trust Index. Um, but if it's not actually being used yet, there's no reason to have it activated on the site. Um, and that one pulls your Google reviews directly through the API to the site so that you always have those updated Google reviews. Um, and Google likes the way that that is placed because um, the schema that's involved, the way the plugin places it kind of thing. So that's a good plugin. Um, just activate it when you're ready kind of thing. Um, and then as far as like debugging the file managers, um, when you have an issue, activate them, use them. When you deactivate a plugin, it's almost like you have the install file on your computer, but you haven't installed it kind of thing. So it's not running. It's not affecting the site when they're deactivated like this. Um, so as far as that goes, uh, the debugging, that kind of thing, it can stay there and just stay deactivated. File managers, uh, like you yourself, you have access to your server, depending on who we're talking about. You've got different setups. Maybe they only have their WordPress backend that kind of thing. Um, if you can avoid using WordPress file managers, I've seen more malware issues with those kind of plugins um, than anything else. Um, once someone gets into your back end, if they have file access, they can get deeper into the server, that kind of thing. So it just kind of opens up a lot of avenues there. Um, and then you've got WP Code Lite um, and WP Form Signatures. Uh, unless you need signatures on your forms, that's just extra bloat you know, kind of thing, but great plugin if you need it. Um, and then the WP code light, that's usually adding like the little snippets. So say you're trying to add, um, you know, your, your Google tag manager tags, stuff like that. Um, for an intermediate person that's trying to add some code in and make sure it gets in the right place. Those plugins are awesome. Um, again, just pick one when you go to pick your code plugin and make sure it's got some good reviews on the store. It's one of the more popular ones that's getting updated. Um, and then just stick with that one. You don't want to run a bunch of different ones, just more clutter kind of thing. So did you have any other specific questions on some of the plugins in here, what they do, um, any reason to keep one or no. not, that kind of thing? So I was kind of going over, like, I like to put stuff on auto update. What is your <laughs> thought on that? Uh, in all my years of doing this, I've heard it go both ways. Some people think auto update is crazy. Um, I'm a firm believer in backups. So if you're running good backups on your server, um, separate from your WordPress, and those are automatic anyways, um, I, I think it's more than safe to leave it on auto updates. Um, it is more secure to be updated. 
but there is potential that an update on one plugin is not going to line up. They haven't updated this other plugin yet. And so you're going to see some breakage kind of thing. Um, so if you're leaving them on auto update, just make sure you're checking your sites often kind of thing. Make sure that uptime is there. Um, there's a few uptime managing plugins out there that don't affect your front end speed and just basically ping to let you know that the site went down. Um, so setting up something like that, just so that you know your sites are staying up, uh, but that they're always getting those updates. Um, but that's really the only issue you got to worry about is if someone updates one and not the other, they could break until they both update kind of thing. Got it. Okay. And then um, I think a big thing, anytime like you do any updates, you talk about cash, clear your cash, clear your cash. Can you show us like an easy way, uh, a plug-in way, like, so if we compare these two, right, the ones we had open, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a perfect example. Like, okay, how do I clear my cache? Like, it just a, is it a refresh on so, your browser? So there's a few different caches. So, mm -hmm. uh, so like for this site here, we've got uh, W3 uh, total cache on here. Um, and so they put this little bar up here. Most of your caching plugins will do this. Um, and they've got a real simple button for purge all caches. So that that's actually with theirs, it's going to clear any server caches and anything that they built um, right off the bat there. Now, the other thing is, is when you load a web page, your browser itself is caching the page. Uh, so that way, the next time you go to the page, it doesn't have to re-download the page every time kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so whether you're on Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, if that even exists still, um, can you guys see my actual top bar too here? Yep. Yeah. So, and it's about in the same place, but you're going to have somewhere where it's in your history here. Um, let's see what's settings on this one. Um, let's see, we'll go over here, privacy and security, and we're going to delete browsing data. Um, but you notice like I've got mine here. Some of you guys can still see my screen fine. Um, yes. I always have it just checked for cache and images. Um, your cookies and site data is what's keeping you logged into sites. So if you clear that constantly while you're trying to work on your site, you're going to have to keep logging back into it, that sort of thing. Um, and then I'm not interested in clearing my browsing history. Um, but this cached images and files, um, and I mean, I cleared this not that long ago, but it's got 320 megabytes pretty much just from what we're doing right now. So that could be JavaScript that's in there. It could be all this other stuff that was part of that cache. Um, that's sitting there, you cleared it off your server so it's not loading, but each time the page loads, Chrome is not telling the website to give me a fresh copy of it kind of thing. So you got to clear this one as well. Uh, there are other caches, but those are the two most common, cause you the most issues 99% of the time is your site cache and then your browser cache. Okay. And then can we show the other one? Because I know the other one is a little different. For the for the website itself, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the W three cache is up there as far as let's see, light speed cache. Uh, now this one, if I remember correctly, was actually the conflict um, that we had had. So right now we have um, W three and we have light speed activated up here, and so same process. You've got to purge all purge light speed cache or adjust your CSS that kind of thing. Um, so that's your, your site cache when Lightspeed is running. Now, if I were to go in and after it's built a cache, um, Lightspeed, when I deactivate it, does not delete the cache that it's built by as part of its deactivation. So that cache is still sitting there and might be what your website serves the browser when it comes around, which will cause you issues. And that was that weird where like your homepage wasn't showing up right, even though we mm -hmm. kept changing it. Um, and that's what it was, is, is you had a secondary cache file that was holding on to some information. Um, so that's the big thing is anytime you, you remove a cache um, plugin, you're going to deactivate it, whatever, make sure you come up and hit purge all on that plugin specifically, and then just immediately deactivate it right after. Um, and that guarantees that it hasn't had a chance to rebuild a cache um, and that it's cleared out before you deactivate it. Um, so some plugins will see the, the cache files from the other plugins and they'll clear them out. Some won't. It just depends on how they're coded. So so you, you guys can see that like there's different plugins. Uh, Jeremy showed you on, on um, you know, Chrome, how you clear that cache because that seems to be a big issue. 
Um, now plugins like with securities and, and, you know, what are some ways to protect yourself with, when it comes to plugins? Uh, as far as like selecting plugins? That kind yeah. Of thing. Or just like updating plugins. I know that's crucial. It's funny. Uh, one of my colleagues, uh, what was Amy? She had a security. It was a security website client of hers. And one of the first things in her audit, she told him, hey, you have a lot of plugins that are not updated. Well, a security company got hacked through one of the expired plugins. A security company, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just like the irony of it, right? They they weren't paying a clo close enough attention to their own backyard. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's funny. Uh, yeah, as far as that goes, updating your plugins is important. Most of the updates that come out, you're like, I'm updating these things constantly. I haven't had a new feature in years. The updates are actually for security patches. Um, so basically, there are there are companies out there. There's all kinds of people out there that are purposely and, and maliciously trying to hack websites. And they're tracking that data. They're finding the holes and they're patching them. And then they put those things out for WordPress plugin developers. And then they go, oh, okay, I've got to go through my code and make sure that I plug that hole that's in my code kind of thing. So that's the constant updates, the 0 0.001 edition update that they're doing every couple of days kind of thing. Um, most of it is security. Um, and so that's why those updates are so important. Um, as far as big feature updates, uh, a lot of your big companies, even when it's potentially going to break your site because it's that big of an update, um, it'll actually tell you on the update line, that little, like this one here, it says Divi Essentials available kind of thing. It'll actually say, this is a major update. Elementor is a big one about that, where it's like, hey, this is just security, whatever. Um, and that way, you know, hey, make sure you have a backup. Um, as long as you have a good backup, it's not that big of a deal. You know, sites can always be recovered as long as you have that uh, and, and let them roll. Um, but again, as far as the auto updates, um, I would be more leery when the site was built. Um, I mean, I have some clients where we're still managing a site that was built 15 years ago. Um, and so there's some plugins that we basically have to look for security holes ourselves because um, they're not being updated anymore. Uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so, so it kind of just depends. Uh, but in general, if you get the plugin from the WordPress store, it I would say it's generally safe kind of thing. They do clear people out of there. Um, but look for the higher stars, the more installations. Um, it's kind of just just go with the numbers. If a lot of people are having success, you probably will too on that right. stuff. 100%. So, um, another sure. thing, like a lot of like, including this one, it'll be like the domain name WP dot admin, right? And then mm -hmm. it'll have your login. Um, you can also change that. You absolutely can. Um, so as far as that goes, the theory behind that is if every WordPress site is WP admin and I'm going to be a hacker today, I know where to start where the login pages. Um, but ultimately hiding your login page to me, as someone that understands the back end of it, and hackers are a lot smarter than I am, let's be fair, uh, it, you're not doing a whole lot, you know, kind of thing. It's like locking your door, but leaving the key on top of the mat outside kind of thing. It's still there. They're still going to get in if they want to. You right. Know? Okay. But that is, a, a you know, a basic thing that um, mm -hmm. I've heard that's also done for security. Um, now... As we end here, Jeremy, if you can kind of recap, when it comes to plugins, how what's the best way to disable them and check your site? Do it one at a time, see how it affects the rendering. That way you know, okay, if you uh, look at stuff like, okay, I got yeah. all this disabled. I see the sites not being affected. I cleared the cache shown kind of the before and afters. Once I deactivate, a certain plugin that you weren't sure you thought you didn't need and like, oops, like what I did. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say uh, I'm a big component of, of back your site up before you do anything. So first things first, as soon as you get in there, back it up um, before you start working. And then um, my personal way of doing it is not necessarily a one by one. I go through and I clear everything 
And then I know I'm going to kind of break something and I go look at the front end of the site and I say, oh, okay. I, and it usually kind of tells you what it is that's not working. It's revolution slider or it's this or that. You say, okay, it's being used right here. And I'll go click that one back on. And I'll go through each page and look for the broken items and click them back on and then clear that cache again and kind of give it a once over. Um, and then I can kind of go through like what we just did with, so what is still inactive and is it important? Does it have another purpose to it? That sort of thing. Uh, so it, it doesn't hurt uh, to reach out for help. I mean, if you send me a screenshot of your plugins and you're like, hey man, do I need these? Um, and that's not just for you, Alfredo, of course, that's for anybody watching. Um, I, I'm more than happy to kind of walk through some of this stuff with different people. Uh, once you get a feel for it, especially if you're an agency guy and you've done 10, 15 of these sites where you've played with them and you've been working on them, it, it is going to click. It, 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 it will become a second nature for you, essentially, as you kind of dig into the, these things a little deeper. So, um, And you'll notice, too, when you start working on a lot of sites, most sites are kind of running the same five to ten plugins. It's like there's a few of these guys that just kind of dominate everybody's site needs these sort of thing. Yep, 100%. Absolutely. So guys, I hope this was whole, uh, valuable, useful for you guys. Um, just something that I was dealing with, with um, other clients, the basic stuff being set up. You don't need some of this stuff, especially with the Google Search Console, um, necessarily a plugin. You can, like, uh, what is it, Google? Uh, Sitekit, Sitekit is, is right? the plugin for it. The, the, you know, the popular one. Um, so... And, and again, just wanted to come with Jeremy because we just experienced this on a few sites, how to really disable them, check your site. The caching is always a big issue, um, whether you're having issues, updates, anything of that, like rendering um, to your site, any updates that you've done. It's always a big thing. You'll hear that, hey, clear your cache, clear your cache. Yeah. And, and one more thing just to add to, um, don't be too nervous to deactivate activate the plugins and reactivate them that in itself shouldn't cause you any problems um, you're not losing settings necessarily um, some things will prompt you when you go to deactivate it do you want to delete the settings that sort of thing obviously we're not doing that just yet until we know um, but don't be afraid to deactivate a plugin just to go look um, if it does break something reactivating it should absolutely put it right back so okay just want to make sure that one's out there yeah 100 percent cool Guys, I appreciate everyone that's on here. Um, those that are catching the replay, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate you guys' support. Feel free to reach out to Jeremy. Feel free to reach out to myself. Um, and as always, much love, much success, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Take care.